On the 22nd of July last year, Vince McMahon announced his retirement from WWE. What a different world that was, eh? July, Lionesses brought football home. Boris Johnson resigned as Prime Minister. Tom Scar released a video where he dressed as the Ever Given at London Comic Con. That was good fun. And Vince McMahon rode into the sunset. He departed under a cloud of incidents and accidents and hints and allegations. So many allegations. With plans to give the company he built to his daughter and son-in-law and watch the sunset on a grateful universe. Whilst dealing with the aforementioned so many allegations. Retirement wasn't Vince's bag, though. Sure, he had a lovely time at his New York birthday bash where John Cena turned up. And we think he was having a lovely time at a restaurant with a mystery lady. I mean... That's, that's quite an intense stare. He's looking at her like she's the first draft of Raw. But WWE is Vince's life work, is Michelangelo's David, is Van Gogh's flowers, that TikTok that Bella Porch did where she barely moves her face to M to the B. So there was always something in the back of our mind palaces that thought that Vince McMahon would reappear. I'm not sure if we expected it within half a year, though. The Wall Street Journal got the ball rolling on this series of unfortunate events on Thursday, January the 5th, with revelations that just before Christmas, Vince McMahon had reached out to the WWE Board of Directors with a proposal for his return. Well, not really a proposal, more a sort of strong-armed demand. You see, Vince McMahon was in the giving mood at Christmas, and he was keen to wrap up WWE with a bow and sell it to the highest bidder. To help do that, though, he had to get back on the board. But the misconduct allegations had not gone away. In fact, they'd actually increased, with more people coming forward with allegations against Vince. At this time, it's key to introduce a board member you may not be familiar with in Manjit Singh. Now, before he stepped up to Stamford, Manjit Singh was the president of Sony Home Entertainment and a key in Sony's further expansion into India. When the Vince McMahon allegations came to the fore, Manjit Singh reportedly had a strong reaction, that's according to PW Insider, and was leading the internal investigation into these allegations. So the thought of Vince getting back on the board, not even after an investigation, but during the investigation, would be met with obvious pushback. And it was. But Vince McMahon was undeterred. He penned a letter to the board of directors in December. WWE is entering a critical juncture in its history, with the upcoming media rights negotiations coinciding with an increased industry-wide demand for quality content and live events, with more companies seeking to own the intellectual property on their platforms. The only way for WWE to fully capitalize on this opportunity is for me to return as executive chairman and support the management team in the negotiations for our media rights and to combine that with a review of strategic alternatives. My return will allow WWE, as well as any transaction counterparties, to engage in these processes, knowing they will have the support of the controlling shareholder. Me. The board of directors wrote back with what the business world would probably call a something proper, but we see it as more of a Dear John letter. We are prepared to initiate such a process and happy to work with you to ensure that it is the best process for the company and all of its shareholders. Although we welcome your participation in the launch of a strategic alternatives review process, it is also our unanimous view that your return to the company at this time, while government investigations into your conduct by the US Attorney's Office and SEC are still pending, would not be prudent from a shareholder value perspective. So Vince, whilst you're being investigated, you're not coming back on the board. Short while later, Vince McMahon put pen to paper once more. There is no rationale for your position that my return to the company would not be prudent from a shareholder value perspective. To the contrary, my return in the context of the media rights negotiations and potential value maximizing strategic transaction is necessary, precisely from a shareholder value perspective, because it would allow WWE, as well as any transaction counterparties, to engage in these processes, knowing they will have the support 
support of the controlling shareholder, me. Further, the special committee of the board has concluded its investigation and presumably all of its material findings have been publicly disclosed by the company and nothing has been communicated to me about any matter that would prevent me from returning to the board. I also feel that it is necessary to clearly state my position that in light of the fundamental nature of WWE's media rights to the core value proposition and purpose of WWE, it would be improper for the company or board to take material steps towards any media rights deal without WWE shareholder support, particularly considering that a very clear majority of the voting power explicitly oppresses the company taking these steps without shareholder support. So, Vince saying, if you don't have me back on the board, you're going to have a problem selling the company. What do you say now? Now, according to the Wall Street Journal article that leaked this whole thing, Vince had indeed communicated to the board unless he was directly involved as executive chairman for a strategic review, he as main shareholder would not support or approve any media rights deal or sale. Cue a U-turn visible from space as Vince McMahon power walked back into the boardroom against all odds and all opposition. He wasn't alone though. You see, another prerequisite of his proposed power grab was for an additional two board members to be removed. Any really, Vince ain't bothered. In favor of two additional board members in George Barrios and Michelle Wilson. Now, if you've binged watched the WWE version of Succession for as many years as I have, you'll be familiar with these names. George and Michelle are former co-presidents of WWE. They were sacked in 2022 by um, Vince McMahon, citing differing views on how to best achieve strategic priorities moving forward. I assume they spent the last few years getting their priorities in order. They've had a good long think about what they did because they're now walking back into WWE HQ alongside the guy who told them to leave in the first place. The coup concluded by the early hours of Friday morning with a filing for the WWE investors announcing that Joe Allen Lyons, Jeffrey R. Speed and Alan M. Wexler had been removed without cause from their board seats. Filling said seats were the bums of George Barrios, Michelle Wilson and Vincent Kennedy McMahon. They sit across from the likes of Stephanie McMahon, Nick Khan and Paul Levesque in the metaphorical master suite of WWE. For a few hours at least, so did the aforementioned Manjit Singh. But it was announced a short while later that he too had voluntarily stepped down. No doubt seeing the conflict of interest in having shareholder chit chat with a guy you're internally investigating. He was joined by Ignis Lahoud, who was also vocal about McMahon's ongoing allegations. Now, despite the obvious red wedding occurring, the point of order remained the same, with Nick, Paul and Steph putting out a joint statement expressing how glad they were to have Mr. McMahon back. A joint statement, presumably the same way you'd give a disliked uncle a novelty mug for Christmas and sign it from the whole family. That statement was accompanied by one from Vince himself on WWE's corporate website, confirming his return to the board. He followed up with, WWE has an exceptional management team in place, and I do not intend for my return to have any impact on their roles, duties or responsibilities. It was typed quite slowly, apparently, what with Vince McMahon having one hand behind his back with his fingers crossed, with his feet back under the table, allegedly, apparently, that's a joke, with his feet back under the table, Vince McMahon did something quite interesting. This was revealed by the master of wrestling number wang himself, Brandon Thurston from WrestleNomics. He tweeted that Vince had made a subtle but powerful change to WWE's bylaws. So media rights deals and any company sales can't be made without his approval. As majority shareholder, it would need to have his approval anyway, but Vince McMahon covered his own chapstick covered ass by making it a legal requirement for WWE to go through him exclusively when it comes to TV rights deals. Now, on the shop floor, what is the vibe? Well, Fightful Select reached out to wrestling talent shortly after the initial announcement and the report from the Wall Street Journal. The general reaction was shock. Nobody knew anything like this was on the horizon at all. Many found out through colleagues who'd heard it through the grapevine. Some even found out through websites like The Observer, Fightful, 
and even through Cultaholic. Sean Ross Sapp and his team at Fightful spoke to multiple members of the talent roster, the production team, and the creative staff with one saying, there will be roster uproar if Vince McMahon returns to head up creative. Those are strong words. PW Insider's sources inside WWE reacted to Vince's news in similar fashion. We've heard from some who said if he's back, they want out. But whether that's actually happening remains to be seen. All of this unease in the land of Titan wasn't lost in Jacksonville because Tony Khan put out a tweet bemused by why suddenly everybody was being much nicer to him that day. <laughs> Clearly the stars of Raw, SmackDown and NXT needed some reassurance, but that would have to wait because they were not invited to an all-hands-on-deck staff meeting that took place at 3.30pm local time to explain just what in the name of Game of Thrones was going on. During this business-wide call, the worst-kept secret was made official. Vince McMahon was back on the board of directors. It's a bit like your mum telling you you got Parappa the Rapper for your birthday after you'd seen her buying it in HMV. However, they were quick to reassure that no changes to management or the responsibilities of said management would be forthcoming. Stephanie McMahon, Nick Khan would still co-CEO. Triple H was still writing TV unimpeded. Frank Riddick III was still using his abacus to decide if WWE should get all the wrestlers oyster cards for when they go to London for money in the bank in July. Everything is, was and would be as everything is, was, and should be. The emphasis of the meeting, though, was that this was a major positive, having Vince McMahon back, because when it comes to their main goal, Vinnie Mac is a big part of it. They emphasised that the sale of the company and the future rights revenue acquisitions were the main thing Vince was back for. They put over strongly that Vince being returning, returning to the company was to push to get more money for TV deals and to sell the company on, something they could do much easier with the main shareholder assuaged. It was also mentioned here that one avenue being explored was a possibility that the company could go private again. One that many other, one of many other ideas that they bounced around. If it would appease the shareholders, they'd end up doing it, essentially. In less than 24 hours, we've got shareholders walking out, staff caught off guard, wrestlers going Kaiser Chiefs and predicting a riot. How's the WWE stock doing in all of this? Well, WWE shares are up. 10% after the announcement, steadily climbing through the day, ending on around 20-odd percent. There was a hold placed on trading WWE for a spell whilst the real world caught up with the wrestling news. But it ended up being a great day to have real-life SmackDown bucks. But why, though? Because last time Vinnie Mac threatened a comeback, they tanked. What's changed? Well, Vince has played a blinder here. By emphasising his return is merely to wheel his wrestling wonderland onto the forecourt and slap a price tag on it so possible suitors could come and kick the tire. It meant that shareholders stood to make some major money if that went through. Vince talking of selling has got the market salivating. Now, Friday ended with SmackDown, and whilst many fans ruminated on the news and half expected some seismic changes to their regularly scheduled programming, it all went along as it had done for the past several months. And WWE corporate website's Vince McMahon quote, where he promised he was done meddling, was, was very accurate. SmackDown was unmeddled. Carrie and Cross and Scarlett picked up a win. There were no red helmets involved. Mind you, Charlotte Flair is a babyface women's champion, and Lacey Evans is due a big push soon. Not to read too much into anything or anything. Uh, that, was the, that was the whirlwind of a day that saw Vince McMahon do the most pro-wrestling thing of all, and that is renege on a retirement. Whilst we as fans are focusing on what impact Vince's return will have on day-to-day -day programming, it kind of feels like Vince's plans are a little bigger than putting the title on Omos or banning Michael Cole saying hospital. Even caught in a legal crossfire caused by his own apparent alleged multiple trespasses, Vince McMahon senses that a multi-million dollar deal is on the cards and he wants to play his hand. Hence the bum rushing of the boardroom and the barricading of himself in with George and Michelle, the rock steady and bebop to his shredder. Hence changing the company bylaws that say, if you want Gerald Field so bad, you've got to ask me first. He knows that if a deal goes through without him and WWE gets bagged up for a billion buck business, he may be stuck on the outside looking in forever. It's like, it's a bit like defecating yourself as you're running for the last bus. The stink of what happened is very much on you, but if you miss the bus, then you're stuck completely. You can deal with a room full of people looking at you with horror and, and disgust because 
you got where you needed to be and, and it won't last forever anyway. You might not see many of them again. That's a, that's a really grim analogy that I came up with at about half one in the morning. <laughs> But I think it's quite right. In terms of the companies that could get the credit card out for a card of characters and clotheslines, that's another video for another time. It is the second week of January. And if you were hoping for a smooth sailing wrestling world in 2023, you've got no chance in hell. Stay safe. Love you. Bye.